as the development of, of the uh, Sasha Series 2 progressed, uh, a number of improvements uh, began to emerge. Uh, one was in the low frequencies through upgrading the structure of the enclosure, uh, improving the, the speed of the base and reducing the overhang. By using the laser vibrometer system, we're able to really see that there are, there are always areas to improve in. We grid out the side of the enclosure and we take uh, sweeps and measurements at every single point one point at a time. It takes a long time, but it yields such a rich amount of data and uh, visually shows us where the panels are supported most and where we need more support within the panel and the enclosure. The area that was the most important to me sonically is that phenomenally engaging lower mid-range upper base region. That part of the spectrum is for me the biggest glory of the Sasha Series 2. And it, it doesn't matter whether it's popular music or jazz or rock and roll or classical, it does not matter. You will hear that benefit in all kinds of music. We've got um, the improvements in the tweeter. The tweeter uh, incorporates um, our latest thinking on stored energy uh, control. The XLF, the tweeter baffle, is X material. And that's ideal for tweeter and woofer coupling. Uh, with the Sasha and the Watt Puppy line, that baffle has always been the same material. And Sasha is S material, designed specifically for the Sasha. By changing the angle uh, between the mid range and the tweeter, we're able to use the X material with the tweeter. And so now that front baffle is a combination of various materials which highlight the performance characteristics of each of those drivers in the most optimal way. From the front, of course, it looks just like the tweeters in the uh, Alexia and the XLF. They're not the same tweeter. They're bespoke to the particular product that they go into. So it's not just an off-the-shelf thing that you just toss in there and one size fits all. It's a convex dome uh, design. In order to get the best from that tweeter, you have to be more on axis to that tweeter. And so along with changing the angle of the, uh, the baffle so that that convergent synergy um, wavefront is more on axis with the listener, we wanted even more resolution, more ability to adjust for that listening position and the relative location between the acoustical center of the tweeter and the acoustical center of the mid-range. Why only limit the customer to four positions? Why not give them the staircase and the max and the ability to adjust it with three different spikes and a staircase with 10 steps? So the, the amount of adjustability has exponentially gone up. I haven't stopped to count them but you know, it basically would accommodate a very wide range of listening distances and listening ear heights. The other thing that I'm very pleased that we achieved is a lowering of the noise floor throughout the spectrum. That's the result of enclosure design, the improved timing, because time incoherence creates noise. When you add one improvement on top of another and another, they add up. And the sum total of all those improvements adds to the emotional experience of listening to music and to, to be in that concert hall or to have that musician right in your living room when you close your eyes. 